In the previous video, we saw that electrons are distributed probabilistically across the 3D plane. And we know that solving the Schrodinger's equation gives us the information about the exact location of the electrons. And interestingly, we now know that they are distributed across shells, subshells, and orbitals. Now, across might not be the correct phrase for this, but you will see what I mean, what exactly I mean by that. Okay, let us understand what these are. All right. So, imagine the shells to be the neighborhood, okay, to be the neighborhood in which the electrons live. Okay, now the subshells are the houses, okay, the houses in the neighborhood, okay, cool. And the orbitals are the little rooms inside those houses in which the electrons actually live. Okay, you see, a neighborhood can have multiple houses, eh? and in a particular shell, there can be you know, many houses, many subshells, okay? And in those subshells, there can be multiple orbitals. We'll see what changes and what doesn't. Uh, all right, yes, correct. Now let's go a bit deeper into the things, okay? Let us understand what shells are for a moment, okay? Let us consider the Bohr's model for a second. Make You know, you know, this is not the correct thing, right? This is not the correct, you know, this is not correct, okay? Bohr's model is not correct. But I'm just showing you for the simplicity, okay? Okay. You must have came across this word shells before in ninth grade, but that's all right. We can always go deeper and deeper, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah. So imagine this nucleus, okay? This nucleus to be your school, all right? And these rings are the shells in this, you know, atomic case, but these are different neighborhoods, okay? These are different neighborhoods which are farther and farther away from your school, okay? Now, consider yourself to be an electron, okay? This is you. This is the electron and, you know, imagine that you're, you know, uh, one meter away, okay? Let's, one meter away from school. You're kind of excited. You're finally out, the, out of the school. You can now finally go home and relax. Now you do what? You go away a bit more, okay? In this neighborhood, you see a lot of friends, okay? You get excited, very excited. And then you go even more away, okay? Even farther. And then you get more excited because you're one step closer to the home, you know? You can play games and enjoy and chill, you know? And you get a bit more away again, you get more excited, and so on. Okay, eventually there will come a time when you are infinitely away from your school, and that means freedom, right? So yeah, this is something very special about shells. The farther you go, the more energy the electrons have, okay? Because of, you know, the less force from the nucleus and, you know, from the electron itself. Okay, now in this case, we have a particular, uh, what do you say, notation for naming the shells, okay? We use the letter N, okay? We use the letter N to represent the number of the shell, okay? In this case, the first shell will be N equals one, the second shell will be N equals two, and N equals three, and so on, okay? Uh, in the next, I mean, if you go a bit deeper, this N is also called, the principal quantum number. Okay, let me write that down. Okay, that's important. Okay, principal quantum number. Okay, principal quantum number. Okay, this principal quantum number is basically this. Okay, this. And that shows the shell or the energy level of the particular electron because shells are, you know, sometimes also called energy levels, okay? Energy levels, okay? And this quantum, you know, principal quantum number shows the energy level or the shell, number of shell. Let's do one thing. Let's keep it short and let's understand sharp shells in the next video. What do you say, you know? This will give you a bit of time to process all this, you know, take a pause because you should take micro breaks 
while learning stuff, right? So, question yourself. Okay, question yourself. Yeah, all right, I found the question. Yeah. What will be the principal quantum number when the electron is infinitely away? Huh? Interesting question, right? Okay, if the electron is in shell number one, that is, you know, that will be principal quantum number will be n equals one, right? n equals one. I mean, okay, I forgot to, you know, like represent. This is how it gets represented. Okay. And in shell number two, we have n equals two in three and so on. But what about infinity? Huh, interesting. All right. I'll give you, you know, I'll, I'll let you think on that. <laughs>